Hey, heavy weather! What's up? It's the Culture Detective here investigating your favorite albums. And today I'm going to be doing an album review on the new Gorillaz album. You... Calm down, YouTube. It's just... I'm just saying the name of an album, okay? It's not hate speech. Don't violate... Don't... Don't strike me on this and say I'm, I'm violating community guidelines or something like that, okay? Cracker Island. So, Gorilla's legendary virtual band hailing from the UK, fronted by musical talent Damon Albarn, is back with a brand new album. This is like their seventh or eighth LP or something like that. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. Hold on, l l let me count. Let, let me give a quick count. We got the self-titled Demon Days, Plastic Beach, The Fall of Humans now. Now see the, Yep, this is the eighth album. And let me just tell you, Gorillaz has been one of the most important groups of musicians uh, for my entire childhood because they are one of the bands I've ever gotten to uh, in, my, in my whole life. And before I even got into music, like, you know, rate your music and the needle drop and pitchfork and all that stuff before i even know all that stuff before i even became a music fan gorillas has been in my life already so uh they are pretty important and they're pretty special now one thing about gorillas is that they put out great creative ambitious projects like demon days and plastic beach where they would experiment with all sorts of different genres combine all sorts of young small artists together to create a creative masterpiece and then alternately they would also release albums that are like small side projects they feel like a bunch of side bees they're kind of underwhelming and they're they're supposed to be underwhelming albums like the fall and now now and of course we have great creative ambitious projects that feel bloated and mediocre unfortunately like humans and the tides turned again about three years ago in the year 2020 when they released song machine season one which sees Gorillaz releasing uh, the first great album since 2010's Plastic Beach, and it is unexpectedly fantastic. Once again, Gorillaz has regained their charms. It's exciting. It's so much fun. It features so many ups and downs and exhilarating moments, and I was blown away by how good Song Machine Season 1 is. And here I thought maybe their next album would be Season 2. But it's not. It's Cracker Island. And it's kind of like one of those small side projects they do, but also not really, because this is also similar to other big projects Gorillaz does because of all the huge features on this album. And yeah, also at the same time, Gorillaz tries different genres here and there, albeit this is nowhere near as creative or as ambitious as other Gorillaz projects. Mostly on Cracker Island, we are presented with synth pop and electronic pop, and that's pretty much it. The lead-up single to the album, the title track, Cracker Island, is fantastic. It is one of my favorite songs from last year. It is a straightforward disco jam with angular guitars and immediate beat groovy keyboards and it's such a freaking banger and Thundercat and Damon Albarn has impeccable chemistry on this track. Then we have Oil which features Stevie Nicks of Metallica fame and it's a pretty basic feel-good new wave jam. I like that lyrically it's kind of interesting and lyrically this album remains interesting. This track in particular sounds like a love song written by computers or something. But yeah, at the end of the day, it's kind of one note in my opinion. Following that, we have The Tired Influencer, which is a dreamy ballad with sweet synths and reverby vocals. I didn't like this track in the first listen, but admittedly, this track grew on me quite a bit. And lyrically, I'm not quite sure what is it about. When I saw the track titled The Tired Influencer, I immediately thought, like, it, this track is going to be about, like, a tired TikToker or some shit like that. Um, but instrumentally, it's really nice and it's really well produced. 
That is followed with Silent Running, which is a slow grooving piano track with guitars and keyboards. We have a feature from Adeleye Omotayo, who is someone I've never heard of before, and he provides some really great vocals. But overall, this track is just kind of meh. It's not like I haven't heard of something like this before. In fact, in Gorilla's discography, I feel like I've heard multiple tracks that sound almost exactly the same. Then that is followed with New Gold, which is a really cool song featuring Tame Impala and Booty Brown. And this is a psychedelic acidic trip. What, what, a, what an interesting name, Booty Brown. This track is a psychedelic acidic trip that's super danceable and charismatic. I love the slow ascending murky bass of the track. It's mwah. And this track feels like a plastic beach throwback with the muffled rapping reminds me of stylo i love the shuffly beats and the woozy vocals the rap verse by booty brown is uh, a little unfunny but i think that's a minor complaint with the track the track overall is still really great then we have the track baby queen we have some weird lyrics about seeing a princess from thailand and how she's all grown up and this is kind of a woozy melting synthy slow jam but it's just kind of one note for me then we have tarantula which is a fun jangly little synth pop tune with some murky percussion some nice keyboard embellishments it's a little one note but i think instrumentally it's definitely a one of the better ones on the album then we have tormenta featuring the one and only bad bunny and this is basically gorillas doing a reggaeton track a reggae tone track. I've never heard Gorillaz doing reggae tone, so I was kind of curious, and it ended up kind of disappointing for me. It is a very middle brow track. It sounds more like a Bad Bunny track than a Gorillaz track, and it's it, it's just it's a little disappointing that we don't have the usual Gorillaz eccentricity on this track like they always do. The auto tune vocals are very average, and this track is also very spacey for some reason. The second to last track is Skinny Ape. It is a hazy grooving track and we have some uh, interesting lyrics. Don't be sad for me. I'm a cartoon G. It sounds like an NFT song. I hope it's not an N NFT song because those stupid gorilla NFTs are stupid. Um, and then we have a super overblown noisy climax. It's just that the hooks on this track are just kind of weak. And the album ends off with Possession Island featuring Beck. And it is a spacey guitar piano ballad. And this is literally the opposite of the band's last collaboration with Beck. This is anything but energetic or exciting. And that's okay. Album endings that are ballads can sound fantastic. And I think the horns at the end of the track sounds really nice. But overall, it's just a very bland ending. And, and it's just unearned. Like the tracks leading up to this ending just aren't exciting or interesting enough to end off with a ballad so uh yeah unfortunately this album is kind of a dud in gorillas discography once again and i don't think that's intended unlike the fall or the now now um this is just kind of a dud the singles sounded great at first but it's just kind of a disappointing burn off i guess I'm giving the new Gorillaz album, Cracker Island, a strong 5 to a light 6 out of 10. So have you listened to the new Gorillaz album from 1 to 10, much you rated, like, like, and subscribe if you want more, and thanks for watching.